the Hunt, a game that I have heard a ton about over the years, but never really played it until recently. I mean, look at the cover of the PlayStation port. It doesn't seem like this would be something that is very fun. It seems like a military ship or submarine simulator. Well, never judge a game by its cover. We've known that over the years, I mean, with Mega Man and other games. And this also brings me to the fact that you can't say a game is shit until you actually play it. There's a lot of people out there, oh, that game looks like shit. Well, it's not even out yet. How do you know if it's not a good game? Well, it looks like shit. That's fucking ridiculous. In the Hunt was developed and published by IRAM and was released in 1993 in the arcade. It was later ported to the PC, Sega Saturn, and PlayStation. In this review, I'm going to talk about the arcade version of In the Hunt. At a later time, maybe I will do a Let's Play on the PlayStation port or just kind of mess around with it or put it in one of my video blogs or whatever. The story behind In the Hunt goes like this. An organization known as DAS, which stands for the Dark Anarchy Society, are using a magnetic doomsday machine to melt the polar ice caps, which will flood the entire world. A few societies survive to build over the highest structures to continue living. The DAS reigns supreme over the survivors using martial law and military weapons. Although the remaining survivors learn about a super weapon being developed by the DAS, so they set up a rebellion using a submarine known as the Gran Via to fight back against the DAS. You will go through six levels in the Gran Via submarine in underwater environments looking to take down the DAS headquarters, destroy it, and take down every single DAS weapon. That's right, you need to show them where the polar bear shits and the penguin pisses. Whatever the hell that means. You just need to go kick some ass. As you can see, In the Hunt is a side-scrolling 2D shoot-em-up, as you will be attacked by a variety of enemies ranging from submarines, big ships, helicopters, jet planes, underwater mines, and more. I really like the variety of enemies in this game, and some are a little tough, especially the big ships. The graphics for In the Hunt are pretty damn nice. The character sprites are great, same with the enemies. The level designs are nice, the game is colorful, and it doesn't glitch at all. All around, the game looks pretty damn good. Now, I know you're looking at this game and thinking, damn, this game looks very similar to an arcade classic side-scrolling shooter. Damn, it looks like Metal Slug! Well, here's a little piece of information. The game was developed by the team that would go on to develop the Metal Slug series for SNK. So the graphic style is very similar, and I love that. Metal Slug is one of those games that I cannot get tired of the graphic style. It's bright, it's got like a cartoon style to it, and it looks badass. All in all, In the Hunt has badass graphics, nothing I can complain about. The music and sound effects are great. Very well done, very well composed, and when it comes to the music, I don't find the music to be memorable or anything like that, but it is good to listen to while you're playing the game. The sound effects are great with the explosions, firing the weapons, and so on. When it comes to difficulty, In the Hunt is not easy, but it's not impossible. There are parts in the game that can be very, very tough, and that's typical in arcade games. If you're good enough, it can be beaten. Thankfully, playing this game on MAME, I can just add more credits, but I'm sure playing this in the arcade, you would spend a good chunk of money trying to beat the game. There are moments where you're gonna have missiles chasing after you and mines all over the place, floating underwater, and just a lot of crazy shit going on all over the place. So you're gonna die a lot, but like I said, it can be beaten, and that is the main factor. If it's impossible, yeah, I can understand some people being mad, but it's not. I myself have been to the end of the game and I died and I decided not to finish it, but I'm sure I could beat it if I tried. You can play multiplayer within the hunt as the cabinet allows two players. So if you find one of the cabinets somewhere out there or if you're using MAME and you might have a MAME cabinet, you have a friend over, set it up for two player fun. I mean, why not? Have a friend over, play some games, conversate while you're playing and just have a good laugh or two. Or if he fucks up, knock the shit out of him. I'm just kidding, don't do that to your friend. I mean, it's your friend. You're there to kick some DAS ass. So you guys gotta be teammates. The controls are great. Moving around is easy, using your weapons is easy, and they respond very well, which is always a plus, especially for an arcade shoot 'em up You move around with a joystick and you have two buttons for your weapons. Very simple to understand. Sure, the ship moves a little slower than you would expect, but that has nothing to do with the controls being slow or anything like that. Very well done. Great. 
In the Hunt is a very fun game. It has that gameplay style that is later shown off in the Metal Slug series. It's action packed, the difficulty is great, the gameplay is just a lot of fun, the graphics are awesome, the music and sound effects are good, and the controls are damn good. Not much I can really complain about other than I feel that six levels is a bit short. I figured eight, maybe nine, maybe up to 10 or 11 would have been nice, but that is a small flaw for a very well done game. And to be honest, I find this game to be somewhat underrated and you don't hear many talking about it, which is a damn shame. I mean, you think a lot of people would be into this game. If you like shoot 'em ups, check out In the Hunt. Either play it in an arcade cabinet if you find one, play it on MAME, play it on the PlayStation, and of course, the Sega Saturn. Now, if you want to play the arcade version of In the Hunt, MAME is a badass arcade emulator. You can find it on many sites. The two that I go to that are probably the best are Emu Paradise and TheOldComputer.com. Of course, if you want a legit copy of the game on home consoles, which I don't blame you at all, the PlayStation port is 75% rare on RarityGuide.com. The prices on eBay, woo, they're a bit expensive. $279.99, $143.03, $56.46, and I think the lowest I seen was $33, which was a disc only. There are some Japanese versions for anywhere around $45 to $60, bucks, which is probably your best bet of finding a copy at a decent price. But even that, I find that to be a little bit expensive. The Sega Saturn version is around $34.99, $58.89, $24.99, $35.99, $35 and so on, and the game is 47% rare. I did see one copy of the PC version, and it's in big box form for $196.07. Talk about expensive. It's a damn shame that the games are not released on any virtual console, PlayStation Network, you know, the Wii Virtual Console, Xbox Live Arcade, and even Steam. I think it should be. I think everybody should be able to buy this game for a reasonable price and play it because it's very much worth it. There is no sequel to End the Hunt, but there should be. It would be awesome if IRM would do a new game, or if SNK gets the rights and makes a new game. I know I would love to play it, and I'm sure others would love to as well. Well, that's it for this review of End the Hunt. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.